NFL Daily is presented by Manscaped. If you're a man, if you're a woman watching this show, then guess what? You need to go to manscaped.com slash chat where you can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. Coming up here on today's show, I got six trade ideas by ESPN. Field Yates wrote an article and said these are six trades that should happen during the preseason. Before I show you all six of those trades and tell you which one is the winner, I want you guys to show our sponsor, Manscaped some love. So think about all the NFL teams out there. There's an old saying at Manscaped, your balls will thank you. Well, how about this? Balls? If an NFL team is balls, it means that they're not very good. So I want you to go down in the comments and let me know an NFL team that reminds you of balls. Seriously, down in the comments, I'm going to be looking. Manscaped's also going to be watching. So we got six trades here from ESPN. That should happen. I'm going to basically walk you through every single one of the deals. I'm going to tell you who wins, and then I'm going to tell you basically why ESPN decided to do these trades. So here's the first trade idea. It's between the Saints and the Miami Dolphins. The Saints get star cornerback Xavier Howard and a 2023rd conditional fifth round pick. The Dolphins, they get a 2022 first round pick. But this wouldn't be a chat sport show if I didn't ask you every single one of these winners or losers here for the trade. So, who wins this trade here? Type Saints down in the comments or I want you to type Dolphins, and since there are a few teams that are actually going to be featured more than once, it's really important that you listen to which team I'm telling you to type. That way, when I go down and look to see what you guys have to say, I know which trade you're referring to. So who wins this trade here? I want you to go down and let me know down in the comments section. So Saints or Dolphins, I'm actually going to sit here, and I'm probably going to end up pointing my finger at the New Orleans Saints. And the reason why I'm going to go this route is because if Jalen Ramsey can go for two first-round picks, not that Xavier. Howard is as good because he's not but the fact that you're only going to give up one first rounder and you're also going to get a fifth round pick in return that to me says the Saints win this deal but here's what ESPN had to say on why it makes sense for the Dolphins Howard formally requested a trade last month putting the spotlight on a potential deal for one of the league's best defenders he's due 49.35 million over the next four years but the Dolphins have thus far been unwilling to acquiesce to Howard's financial desires after linking him to a five years 75.25 million extension in 2019. Here's why it makes sense for the Saints. Howard fills what is the team's greatest need at the moment, cornerback depth. It allows them to perpetuate in a win-now MO that will not wither as it moves to life after Drew Brees. Howard at 28 in his prime years, he would immediately upgrade the Saints defense. All right, y'all, so let's go to trade number two here. The New York Jets get Nick Foles and a 2022 six-round pick. The Bears receive a 2022 six-round pick, but there's also a little bit more into this. The Bears would also have to agree to convert Foles' fully guaranteed 4 million 2022 roster bonus into a signing bonus paid out before the extension of the trade. So with that being said, with everything that you guys see on screen right now, who wins this deal? I want you to go down in the comments right now and let me know. Get your votes in. If you think it's the New York Jets, I want you to type J-E-T-S. If you believe it's the Bears, I want you to go down in the comments right now and type Bears. The way that I'm going to end up falling here on this deal is I'm going to say that the Jets end up winning this one for the simple fact of this. You're getting a backup veteran quarterback, which is something New York desperately, desperately needs. Like, let's not shy away from that. When you really look at a lot of the backup quarterbacks in New York, it's not very pretty. The only guy that's even thrown a snap is actually Josh Johnson. Now, if you guys love chat sports, what I want you to do is make sure that you guys subscribe. Not only do we go live all the time, and we've been doing even more NBA videos here, but what we like to do is be interactive, have a good time. So to make sure that you guys never miss anything, I want you to hit that big red button that says, subscribe. So here's the reason why ESPN thought it made sense for the Jets to go ahead and pull off this trade. The Jets quarterback depth chart beyond rookie Zach Wilson is James Morgan, Mike White, and just signed veteran journeyman Josh Johnson. Morgan and White have very little NFL game experience, and Johnson isn't likely to make much of an impact, which means the duo behind Wilson is one of the least experienced in the league. Here's why it makes sense for the Bears. This is a long way of saying it won't be easy to unfold or unload folds, excuse me, but this structured saves Chicago $5 million in 2022. The draft capital is essentially negligible, but is used to facilitate the deal. In some, the Jets would owe Foles $8 million over two years, 
years and a fair amount for a player who would be one of the league's top backups. Let's go to the third trade idea here from ESPN's Field Yates. The Jacksonville Jaguars, they get tight end Zach Ertz. The Eagles get a 2022 conditional fifth round pick. The pick is also based on how much Ertz plays and how successful he is on this team. So who wins this deal, y'all? If you think it's the Eagles, go down in the comments and type E-A-G-L-E-S Eagles. Or if you think it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, go ahead and type Jags. I'm going to sit here and say that realistically, I think it works for both sides. And the reason why I think it works for both sides is because the Jags desperately need a tight end. Sorry, Tim, uh, Tim Tebow. And the Eagles, they're trying to get rid of Zach Ertz. If it hurts you really bad when you shave your manhood, then maybe you're not using Manscaped. We are introducing the Lawnmower 4.0, and if you want to take advantage of this awesome deal, promo code CHAT at chatsports.com slash chat. 20% off and free shipping. What did I say? Manscaped.com slash chat. I got producer Jeremy. He's telling me you said it wrong, Mitch. And you know what? Maybe I did. I get so excited when I talk about Manscaped because I'm like, I use these products every single day. They work phenomenally and we get to be kind of dirty and I don't know, my childhood uh, self comes out a little bit. But best male grooming products out there and they are really, really amazing. The code is chat. That link is going to be available for y'all in the comments. It's also going to be available in the description. So if you're Zach Ertz and I don't know, you're trying to get the nicest tight end you can get shave it up you don't want to be rocking your george w for too too much all right y'all so here's why the trade makes some sense here for the philadelphia eagles there's no mystery surrounding Ertz's preference to be traded away from philly as he's been the subject of speculation throughout the offseason with dallas goddard available to step into the more primary tight end role and youth movement in some spots of the roster the eagles will have a new look under coach nick serrani here's why it makes sense for also for the eagles excuse me Ertz is due 8.5 million this year which Philly would accumulate in cap and cash savings in any deal that is executed. The draft pick adds to the Eagles' treasures trove of 2022 selections. Now, here's Jacksonville's group of pass catchers tight ends is about as slim as you'll find in the league, making any potential upgrade a worthwhile exploration. He's an exceptional pro and would help the Jacksonville Jaguars culture begins with Trevor Lawrence. That's why it would make sense for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Here, let's go now to the fourth trade idea, and it's between the New England Patriots and the Arizona Cardinals. This one's kind of just straight up. It's a swap. Andy Isabella to New England. The Arizona Cardinals, they get Nikhil Harry. Harry's already requested a trade from New England. Remember, drafted in the first round back in 2019, and this is one of those where Isabella's a more underneath slot receiver, if you will. And he kind of reminds me of Wes Welker for obvious reasons. So who wins this trade? Y'all type Pats or you can go ahead and type cards. Remember, we're trying to find out which deal you think makes the most sense for each squad. So it's Pats or it's cards. We're going to let me know or I'm going to let you guys know here in just a second. But I want you to get your votes in. Patriots or the Arizona Cardinals. I actually think that both teams end up winning this deal for the simple fact of both guys get a fresh start. I would rather have Nikhil Harry, but Harry kind of fits more into what Cliff Kingsbury is trying to do, and Andy Isabella fits more what the New England Patriots are trying to do. So here's why ESPN had to say on the Harry and Isabella trade basically works for both sides. Harry, New England's 2019 first-round pick, has requested a trade after two disappointing campaigns to begin his career. The big wideout has struggled to create separation and to be a force after the catch. He looks like a fringe player to even make the team's roster. This deal essentially amounts to hoping that a change of scenery will serve both parties well. Hicks, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, ESPN on Harry and Isabella, that was the trade idea. I almost jumped ahead of the next trade because I saw it coming up, and it's all good. Here's the fifth trade idea. The Bengals, they get linebacker Jordan Hicks. The Cardinals get a 2022 sixth round pick. So, y'all, you know what I'm going to go ahead and ask you. Who ends up winning this deal here? Because both sides are trying to move on from certain players. I actually think this would help out the Bengals a lot. But before I give you my answer, who wins this deal? Type Cincy or I want you to go ahead and type Arizona. But again, guys, Cincy, Arizona, who ends up winning this deal here? Now, before I give you my answer, if you could, hit me up on IG. I'm at MitchellRens365. And if you want to go ahead and give Jeremy some love out also on Twitter, he's at J.I. Beeling. 
yelling as he's whispering in my ear. So that's the guy making all the graphics move behind the screen. In terms of who ends up winning this deal, I actually think the Bengals do. You're getting a veteran linebacker who had over 100 tackles last season, which would definitely help this Bengals defense. But this is what ESPN had to say and why it makes sense for the Cardinals. Hicks has already been granted permission to seek a trade after agreeing to rework contract earlier this offseason that pays him a base salary of $2 million with $1 million more available via per game roster bonuses, 46 man and 53 man. He finds himself on the outside looking into the Cardinals starting defense after the organization has used first round picks and back to back years on Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons. This is why it makes sense for the Bengals according to the ESPN. For Cincinnati, the addition of Hicks would allow the team to beef up an area that is one of its biggest needs right now. The Bengals have invested some recent draft capital into both positions Jermaine Pratt, Logan Wilson, Akeem Davis Gaither, but a veteran presence would help augment the group during a season in which improved results are needed for the franchise. The last trade idea is actually one that I've had here on Chat Sports before. The Rams get Sony Michelle. Remember, Cam Akers ended up injuring himself. He's going to miss the entire season. The Patriots, they get a 2022 fifth round pick. There's already been tons of trade rumors around Sony Michelle because it looks like they're going to rock and roll with Damian Harris. So the last time I'm going to ask this question, who wins this trade. If you believe it's the Rams, go ahead and type L-A-R. If you think it's the New England Patriots, I want you to go ahead and type N-E. Just kind of like I had a few trades ago, I believe both sides win this one. The Rams get a new starting running back in Michelle. Yes, he's battled some injuries. And then in terms of New England, you get some draft capital back. Sure, you kind of have to bite the ball a little bit taking a running back in round one, but the knee injuries have definitely hurt his production just a little bit. All right, y'all, before I go, shout out to producer Jeremy. found his Twitter thing down below. Go ahead, give my man some love at J.I. Beeling. He does a lot of amazing work here at Chat Sports, and I'm heading out too. Enjoy your week.